So today's topic is uh, about operations. Stakeholders know DOTs best for their construction programs, but with mature systems and economic and practical limits to continued expansion, DOT owner-operator functions are becoming more critical. Operations, our subject today, is, become, is coming into the limelight as the opening of a new center of excellence asserts. And um, I'm very pleased to have our um, presenters today. But before I um, get started with introductions, I'm going to just, uh, for those not familiar with SSTI, I just want to uh, tell you a little bit about us as well. We're a network of reform-minded state DOTs. We were founded in 2010, and we're housed at the University of Wisconsin. You can see that we work with states all over the country. Uh, we do this in three ways. We work at the executive level as a community of practice. Uh, the executives get together once or twice a year so they can share best practices. We also work with them on technical assistance programs directly, and we're a resource for the larger transportation community. You can find out more about SSTI at our website, ssti.us. And um, now I'm going to go ahead and introduce our panelists for today. Uh, Don Hunt is the former executive director of the Colorado DOT. And now he has retired from Colorado DOT, and he is a principal at the Antero Company, an infrastructure advisory firm. During Don's tenure at uh, Colorado DOT, he focused nationally on the improvement of transportation operations, chairing the ashto tismo subcommittee and helping to found the National Operations Center of Excellence, which we'll also be hearing about today. Don focused the earlier portion of his career with the transportation and urban development firm BRW, and he was the CEO of that company from 1990 to 1998. Our second speaker will be Dennis Motiani, and he's the executive director of the National Operations Center of Excellence in Washington, D.C. He served for 25 years at the New Jersey Department of Transportation, including as assistant commissioner. He's also well known, he's a well known expert in transportation systems management and operations. As the director of, and Dennis, you're going to have to tell me if, if how you uh, pronounce this abbreviation, whether you actually say the whole name the whole time or you just say no, no, no co, uh, National Operations Center of Excellence. Uh, Dennis is responsible for the strategic oversight and day to day operations of the center. And without further ado, I am going to go ahead and turn this over to our speakers who uh, know much more about this subject than I do. So, Don, I am going to give you control of the slides, and uh, you can take it away. Thank you. Muted. <clears throat> thank you, Robbie, and thank you, uh, SSDI, for putting on the operations webinar today. Uh, I guess my background is a little unusual in terms of uh, running a state DOT. Well, I've been in the transportation and infrastructure industry my whole life. I served uh, in the public sector for just four years as uh, executive director of the Colorado DOT. And uh, I decided that uh, four years was about the right amount of time for me, and I did return to the private sector uh, last month. But while I was executive director of CDOT, I must say that I really was uh, totally enthralled by the possibilities that lie ahead in the area of transportation operations. It didn't take me very long sitting in the Colorado chair to recognize that we're very limited in terms of future, well, current and future funding. And um, I also believe that on the highway side, Technology, uh, while we have dabbled in technology, I think that as DOTs, we have not done a great job in bringing the benefits of technology to surface transportation, highway transportation, certainly in the same way that technology has changed our lives in so many other ways. So I really see operations 
uh, as being a great future for uh, vehicular transportation. And uh, I committed a lot of my national time that I had available with AASHTO in terms of uh, working on transportation systems management and operations. That's that TSMO TISMO abbreviation that we'll hear throughout. While I was at uh, Colorado, I did uh, elevate TISMO operations to a division status. I thought that was important. They now have their own line budget uh, separate from projects. And uh, the other thing is that they have a strong alignment with our division of maintenance. And I think as I talk a little bit about what's gone on in Colorado, uh, you'll see how important that alignment between operations and maintenance is. Probably the most challenging operational corridor in the state of Colorado is the I-70 mountain corridor. It runs from Denver west to, uh, through the uh, Continental Divide and into the areas that uh, provide so much of our resort recreation in Colorado. The I-70 corridor uh, is about 100 miles from Denver uh, through Vail to Beaver Creek. And uh, a great deal of that I-70 mountain corridor is above 8,000 feet with two points that are almost 11,000 feet, the Eisenhower Tunnel and Vail Pass. Uh, I-70 serves at least six major uh, destination ski areas and is the source of a large, large portion of Colorado's tourism uh, dollars. Now, to make it even a little bit worse, a great deal of I-70 was built in the 1960s. And on the graphic that you see, as you proceed west from Denver, the blue illustrates where we have three lanes in each direction. And just a little ways outside of Denver, into the foothills, the road, uh, the highway becomes uh, two lanes in each direction, trying to serve uh, all of those ski areas, all the day recreation during the winter. And, uh, even greater uh, traffic during the summertime as people go to the resorts to hike and enjoy uh, the beautiful Colorado scenery. So while it was built in 1960, uh, the 1960s and worked very well, uh, very little, if any, of the highway has been uh, increased in capacity over the last 50 years. And in fact, the first capacity project that CDOT ever did was completed uh, just last year when we widened uh, a couple of tunnels uh, in the Foothills area at Idaho Springs. So if you've been in Colorado skiing or returning to the airport on a summer Saturday or Sunday afternoon, you know this is one of the most heavily congested recreational corridors in the country. But it only congests about 50 times a year. Compare that to the Monday to Friday traffic that we uh, experience in Denver and you look at the cost of adding additional capacity to the I-70 mountain corridor, and you can quickly come to the conclusion that we better do the best possible job of operating the corridor before we start talking about spending billions of dollars on additional capacity. So this all really came to a head uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, on February 9th, one year ago, uh, we experienced one of the worst you know, log jams, congestion, delays, and closures on the I-70 corridor that we had ever seen. Uh, we had metering. That's where at the Eisenhower-Johnson Tunnel, we have to uh, close the tunnel periodically because traffic is backing up eastbound, backing into the tunnel, creating a safety situation. So we're stopping traffic on and off for five hours. I'll let you read how many vehicles and how many semis. But what was really amazing is that we had three hours of hard closure, full closure, uh, just at the beginning of the ski areas in Silverthorne and an eight-hour hard closure at Vail. Now, it was snowing pretty hard. But uh, we have the philosophy now in I-70 Mountain Corridor that we keep that freeway open. Uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, every day of the year, 
And to see these kind of closures and experience that kind of motorist angst, uh, we're frankly lucky it didn't turn into something worse. Everyone remained safe. So uh, no good catastrophe, I think, should go unused. So we really used that uh, incident on well, February 9th last year to really motivate some change in our organization. And uh, what we did almost immediately is take a much stronger corridor approach. Uh, like all, uh, I think, companies or uh, governmental agencies where we have different districts uh, hitting one another, we don't do a very good job of managing across boundaries. So we decided to take a much more integrated corridor management approach. Uh, we actually this year have established a corridor manager that's in control of all operations and maintenance for the 100 miles uh, across regional boundaries, if you can imagine that. If you've ever worked for a DOT, actually managing something across regional boundaries doesn't happen very often. But we're trying to make that happen on the I-70 Mountain Corridor. One of the things we did was really work better with uh, maintenance. And you can see we went to something we call snowplow escorts. Uh, instead of stopping cars at the mouth of the Eisenhower Tunnel as they returned to Denver on a very steep grade, uh, we found that uh, if we stopped the traffic down below, about eight miles below the tunnel, then got echelon plows or uh, plows working in tandem, uh, clearing the way periodically. We were better off to stop traffic. We had a more reliable ride overall by stopping traffic clearing the road and then reopening it again. Uh, even last winter, a year ago in March, we saw that we were bringing down the uh, uh, delays, uh, the really terrible delays on peak travel days with adverse weather. And we had reduced all of those uh, spin outs that were occurring at the mouth of the Eisenhower Tunnel. Now, one other thing we did, this is interesting after February 9th, we got right into the newspaper and said, Coloradans, we need your help. We're going to do better. We're not going to have these big delays. We're going to make sure we do a better job of operating. So we need your help, too. An awful lot of those spin-outs are being caused by folks with bald tires or semi-tractor trailers that have not put on their chains. You need to do better. And right away, uh, in the, that got in the press. It swung back against the department with people saying that uh, they were experienced drivers from Colorado. They could drive in all conditions with uh, tires that didn't necessarily have any tread. And we were just trying to blame the wrong people. So uh, it's, it's tough to work in uh, these areas of operations and maintenance. We all know it takes a lot of cooperation from law enforcement. And we were saying it even takes cooperation from motorists. And they weren't quite ready for that. In terms of this winter, which is now just concluding, our objectives were, were to uh, improve safety, uh, reduce those long closure times, uh, reduce the periods of delay in excess of 90 minute delays. Now that seems extraordinarily high, but when you had two and a half hour delays, getting back down to 60 to 90 minutes is a real victory. And then of course, planning time index is our, our real measure. We put an additional $8 million in operational improvements into the corridor for this winter season. And I think the next slide talks about some of the active traffic management that we're doing, again, those snowplow escorts. Uh, we've expanded courtesy patrol. Uh, we've done additional ramp metering locations throughout uh, the ski area counties. And in fact, uh, with the aid of the Federal Highway Administration, we have added uh, a mainline a signal. Uh, as you start the eight mile approach to the Eisenhower Tunnel, we actually have traffic signals on the main line of an interstate where we bring traffic to a stop and uh, allow those snowplow escorts to get in ahead of the traffic and clear the road. Uh, cooperation with our maintenance division has been outstanding. We've been able to surge uh, staffing and equipment from around the state into this corridor. Uh, by surging, I mean stealing people and uh, equipment from other parts of the state and, and moving it around to where it's most needed. And on the staff side, we've done all of that with really hiring uh, no additional people. We've requested 
volunteers from other parts of the state to spend one week in this I-70 corridor. Uh, they go on per diem, they stay in hotels, it's rather expensive, but it is really a lot loudest to bolster our staffing in a part of the state where it's very expensive to live, very expensive to hire people. So performance criteria are what really makes all of this work. I've said over and over again, and I don't know if there are any C daughters on the on the webinar here. I hope there are. Um, as we create an operations division in DOTs, uh, just plainly operations folks have to do a much better job of performance measurement than everyone else in the department. Now that's maybe unfair, but a lot of the other folks at a DOT are able to build projects and have ribbon cuttings and help remind elected officials and transportation commissioners about what they do. It's so hard when you're working in operations, when you're really managing a highway instead of building new capacity, uh, you really need to have those performance measures and have better data and better outcomes than anyone else can prove uh, in any other division. So you can see these are just early data through December. Uh, I'm sure there's more uh, complete data or there will be soon at the end of the winter. But you can see that uh, last part, uh, or the first part of the winter through December 14 compared to 13 out in that right-hand column we were seeing incredible decreases in injuries, accidents, weather crashes, closure time, uh, excess delay, or delay in excess of 90 minutes, and the planning time index, all down from 63 percent, 74, 59, just incredible uh, improvement in a very short time. So it's going to be interesting to compare the whole winter of 15 to 14, one additional challenge in operational data uh, in the winter time is you have to normalize for snow and certainly this March in Colorado has been a, a, a drier month than, than the uh, March of 2014. So what I want to do now is transition uh, back to the National Center of Operation Excellence. How did that happen? Uh, for two and a half years I chaired the uh, GIZMO uh, subcommittee for AASHTO, which really brought together all of the operational folks, and I think we really got energized and reinvigorated on focusing on operations. What became clear is that that field, because of uh, new technologies, and I really like to talk about three big uh, change factors in transportation, being connectivity, uh, big data, or the, the internet of everything, and then finally automation is really going to bring new power to managing and operating uh, the, the highway system. So with the leadership of AASHTO, four partners were brought together. AASHTO, the Institute of Traffic Engineers, ITS America, and then our pretty continual uh, funding partner, the Federal Highway Administration, and create a permanent dedicated staff uh, at a National Center of Excellence to really be the recognized hub for knowledge and knowledge sharing in the operational field. And uh, early this year, we were able to bring on, uh, uh, I think, a great hire, the first director of the center, Dennis Mopiani. And it's now up to Dennis to take us forward in terms of operations and being the go-to location for operational knowledge in the transportation industry. So with that, uh, I think, Robbie, I can turn it over to Dennis. Unmuted. Great. Well, thank you, Don. Um, not living in Colorado, um, I'm actually fascinated by how um, you handle this situation that you have out there. Um, and yes, I am going to turn it over to Dennis. Um, and I will give him mouse control. In just a moment. Okay, Dennis, you're all set. Okay. Uh, Muted. Bobby, and good afternoon. Like Robbie said, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are in the country. Um, I'd like to first thank Robbie Weber and SSTI for this opportunity, and thank you all for joining us today. 
Uh, and I'm hoping that by by end of this webinar, uh, you will leave with a better understanding on the background, purpose, goals, and services offered by the National Operations Center of Excellence. Uh, and, and no, Ravi, it's a no-co is not the term that we would like to use. It's just simply the center of excellence. So with that, um, um, the center uh, is a success story on many fronts. Uh, it's a success story for SHARP-2 research, uh, SHARP-2 implementation, and also a success story for ASHTO Subcommittee on Transportation Systems Management and Operation, uh, or lovingly known as STISMO. Uh, many thanks to Don Hunt, um, who was the chair of this subcommittee, and, and for if it wasn't for his leadership, I don't think we would have gone anywhere. And he took it from a concept and turned it into a functional center. I was interviewed a few days ago um, for an MPO publication. And the first question that I was asked was, why the center of excellence? So let's take a, take a look at the first slide. Your agency has unlimited funding. Uh, you can add capacity, not an issue. Stakeholders do not have, uh, uh, you do not, you're not a, you're not accountable to stakeholders. TISMO is well understood um, facet, facet of, of transportation. Um, plenty of opportunities for training. TISMO is very mature. And uh, of course, you share noteworthy practices like Don just did. Uh, and if that's the case, if you check all the boxes, uh, goodbye, you don't need me, and I'll see you some other time. But obviously, that's not true. These are rhetorical questions. Um, we are all in the same boat. Uh, one state may have made progress in one area of TISMO, while the other state may have moved along in a different part of TISMO. There are no states that I know have mastered it all. So that begs a question or two. Uh, do we keep on learning by throwing the limited monies that we have in reinventing the wheel? Or do we learn from each other? And if we agree to learn from each other, then, then how do we do it best? Where do we do it? So uh, this slide shows a little transition of how the center started. Uh, there should be one more arrow on top. I, I should add one, which is Sharp 2. So it all started as, as Sharp 2. Um, before Sharp 2, uh, reliability, the term reliability was kind of unknown as, as um, uh, connected to uh, transportation. So Sharp 2 research really focused on four different uh, focused areas, and, and reliability was one of them. Sharp 2 also gave us some amazing products. Many of you may be familiar with Traffic Incident Management, or TIM, Train the Trainer, Regional Operation Forums, Capability Maturity Models, and of course, the National Operations Center of Excellence was a product of Sharp 2. So initially, it came about as a KTS, or knowledge transfer system. Um, and it was supposed to house reliability products and how we can integrate reliability tools, um, methodologies, and products um, for, for the users. So there was a website, and um, um, a pretty detailed website, uh, and, and a little bit more than that. But that was not enough. So when we were implementing it, there was a need uh, realized that there has to be a little bit more than that. And that little bit more was that this the content should be more than just Sharp 2. It should be TSM and O content. The calendar should be a robust calendar. It should have links to different websites, social media, and that there could be a platform uh, for practitioners to exchange technical information, cross citation of best practices. So that was formation of, uh, of EKTS, or Enhanced Knowledge Transfer System. So as, as we were working on ASTO, uh, Federal Highway, ITS America, and ITE were working on that, um, they also heard there was a need for, for a little bit more. And a little bit more was to have technical service program, which, which encompasses in-person, face-to-face interaction. So, so what is the Center of Excellence? The Center of Excellence is a combination of EKTS and the technical service. It's a team, a shared facility, or an entity collaborating to pursue any kind of excellence. In this case, it's a TSMNO excellence. It provides leadership. It provides knowledge synthesis. 
It provides, identifies best practices and guidance, uh, identifies research needs, workshops, training, and peer-to-peer -peer, um, relationship and, and, and forums. So the mission is to serve as a focal point for sharing up-to-date information and, um, and to provide uh, professional development through an actively managed website, person, uh, in-person peer-to-peer uh, workshops, uh, webinars, and they really serve as a communal hub. Uh, Don mentioned go-to. This is the go-to place. Some of the goals were to educate, train, and develop transportation agency officials. Uh, many of you know, uh, TSM and now, that word uh, did not even exist maybe two years ago. Uh, operations as, as a whole concept, as a team, did not exist 20, 25 years ago. While other areas of transportation, the payment side, the, the maintenance side, construction, is so much more mature. So, so to educate, train, develop transportation agency official uh, and TISMO practitioner by offering reliable information and professional development opportunities. And then continuously engage stakeholders in developing, and I, I'm hoping that, that people who are out there today would give me by, when, we, when we, we're done with this, uh, engage yourself um, in the chat box. Give me some, ask me questions or, 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 or offer me some suggestions of how do you see that center can help you or your state or your, your agency. So why now? Um, as we all know, and I just mentioned, uh, TISMO uh, is being mainstreamed uh, through SHARP2, through Federal Highway, and, and honestly, um, if not now, then when? We, we know money is shrinking, um, adding capacity is not getting easier, so we need to manage our existing resources and, and get the most out of it. Building from the strengths of organization, uh, Don mentioned the different organization. Uh, these three organizations, the ASTO, IT, and ITS America came together, signed an MOU. The funding comes, majority majority of the funding comes from the Federal Highway, and then ASTO adds on uh, another chunk for the technical service, uh, technical services. I'm going to go through quickly um, over what these three associations bring together. So, so ASTO, as you know, is the voice of transportation for state DOTs. It has established program and a committee structure that kind of mirrors state DOT operations. Also, it has a history of running some excellence um, program, Excellence Center of Excellence, uh, Environmental Center of Excellence, and also for policy. ITE, on the other hand, brings a large um, international membership, public and private. It brings in uh, planners. It brings in um, um, the, the, the transit side of it. So it, it brings in students and, and other areas of transportation uh, stakeholders, users that ASTOR cannot bring. And then there is ITS America um, with 400 organization members and, and over 1,000 unique members. It, it has a split of 50-50 public and, and, and um, uh, academic and private partner um, um, membership. Uh, they were very strong technolo technology focused, so that they, they bring in a separate side of, of um, expertise to this mix. The center, uh, as you see in this frame, uh, is um, in the center, in the middle, uh, and uh, has a board of directors. Uh, I report to the board of directors. And um, as you can see on the screen, ASTO feeds in, uh, and ITS American IT also feed in uh, in-kind support. Uh, ASTO provides us with uh, contracting, legal, HR, accounting, and financial management, while ITS America and ITE provide me with some staffing and, and other help. Um, and, and the center, like I mentioned before, really, and I'm going to go discuss this a little bit more, uh, really is two simple parts. One is the EKTS part and then the technical service program. And, and, um, and the board, uh, I report to the board, uh, and then the board kind of runs the, the, the strategically and maintains uh, the whole vision and the mission of what the center has to do. So that brings to what services do we offer, and if I can broad brush it, it really is two, but I, I wanted to break down the third one. Uh, so the first two are website-based. Uh, that's the EKTS. 
um, a, a complete website, a robust website with information that you're looking for, place where you can share information. You tell us what you want to get, or if you have a best practice like Don just mentioned, uh, give it to us. We'll post it up there, share it so that people in other areas and region, regions can use it. But also, there's a discussion platform, and I did separate that out. So if you go to the website, you'll find two different ways to get onto the, to the discussion platform. This is where you can actually ask questions to experts, to your peers, and, and you'll get um, answers. Uh, it's a go-to place. It's a hub. It's a community. It's a forum. Uh, the good thing is it, it, this gets archived. You're also working on how to get this in case you are not a fan of going to, it's all about push and pull technology. So if you don't feel like you want to go there constantly to, to, to see it, we, we look into a mechanism where if someone posts a question on there, we'll, we'll end up in your inbox as an email, and perhaps you can answer, and it will go back onto the chat box. But again, a huge platform for you to use uh, for uh, sharing information, sharing questions. And the last but not least is uh, the technical services. And I have another slide for that. By the way, this is the website, www.transportationops.org. Ops, short for operations. And the technical services uh, include peer exchange. Um, at the end of the year, um, every year, uh, we're looking at one summit. We have enough funding to bring 50, 60, uh, folks to the to the meeting uh, that doesn't mean that we cannot have more um, unsubsidized people but this is a summit where we would sit down and discuss what is bugging us what is the new item when we go towards connected well, what are the new challenges that we just got and how do we face them so an opportunity to really for this community to sit together and discuss what's going on um, Development of case studies. So if someone has done a case studies, we'll bring them up and manifest them to a point that we can share it with somebody, others. Uh, capturing best practice, same thing. Um, uh, assessing R&D. Sharp 2 has now sunsetted. So now uh, who's thinking of the big research idea, the, the strategic research? So we all know there's research going on at universities. There's research going on at state level. But who's thinking big picture and, and hopefully uh, the center can help um, kind of at least manifest those those issues, uh, maybe, maybe become the repository of those those ideas and then forward them to NCHRP, uh, or to TRB, and, and, and offer them um, uh, as, as research ideas. Uh, support regional operation forums. Many of you may be familiar uh, of, of Operations Academy. The, these were the smaller forums uh, done at a lower scale. Uh, in person, about eight of them as sharp two, huge, huge success. Uh, and um, the idea is that how do we help them, help Federal Highway support these RLFs, perhaps bring them back one more time, the ones who have already gone through one process. Um, so, so we are looking at that, that as well. Long term, uh, work, the Senate is working with uh, with Federal Highway in different cu um, cutting edge. Um, uh, TSM and now strategies, the ICM, the, the active traffic management, uh, capability maturity model, uh, connected vehicle, uh, training. I'm, I'm hearing constantly, you know, how can we train people? So I'm, we're working with uh, with, SIT, with uh, SITE and NHI to, to see how the center can train. It becomes one place to go to, to, to get trained. Uh, working with uh, National Operations Academy, working with uh, pool funds, working with I quarter coalition, multi-state quarter coalitions, such as I-95 uh, and, and some others. And then once we start, I'm, we're still crawling right now, folks, so, so let's not go let, too far. But once we do start from crawl to walk and walk to run, we, we want to embrace that this is really a TSM and O transportation system, not just a highway system. So we'll, 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 we'll get the AMPO, the, the NACE, the, the APTA and IBTTA and, and the uh, ASCE involved to make it a lot bigger uh, impact. And uh, how how can this be a truly an operations center of excellence, not just a highway? Uh, we've been discussing things with universities, and um, and I'll share with you some uh, some benefits um, eventually as as they happen, uh, go moving forward, uh, and also with the private sector as as they are they get ready to help the center. 
Uh, this is my universe, as you can see. Um, many bubbles, and th this is in a draft form, so there are, there are many more um, bubbles out there, and each one can represent many more. So university is just a bubble here, but a circle, but, but there are many universities, and they're willing, and they want to help, and they want to do something. ITS chapters, ITE chapters. So there's a whole slew of things that we could do. Um, and the question is, how do we do it, and how do we do it in a timely fashion? Uh, and looking at this picture, it, 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 it draws a question, I hope, in your mind and in my mind, certainly to you, and I'm not knowing exactly uh, who you represent, uh, but if you are the state or if you are the city, your county or your MPO, uh, do you, can you really reach out to each of these, these bubbles? Uh, the, the chances are you say no, not for, for daily basis or to reach out and learn from each, of, each one of them. So then, then how would you get information from each one of them? Well, the center provides that opportunity, and the center provides that, that kind of platform to do that. So with that, um, I'm, I'm ready for some Q&A. Um, uh, Unmuted. Thank you one more time, and, and the viewers, and uh, ready for um, any questions that are out there. Great. Well, thank you very much, Dennis. I think this is going to be a, uh, a great resource, and I hope that people on the webinar will pass this along to their peers and others at uh, their workplace, because it sounds like you do have, uh, have some wonderful resources for people. Um, and I do want to remind people that if you have questions, you can type them into the chat box, um, and uh, we will take those questions as they come up. Um, and I'm just opening to see if there's questions. Um, but in the meantime, I, I actually have a question myself. Um, Don sort of alluded to the fact that, you know, a lot of people think of DOTs as building roads and, uh, you know, we've heard from some of the people we work with, well, you know, politicians love to cut ribbons, and that's always a great photo op. But it's the operations that keep things running. I mean, and that's really what this is all about. Um, and it's a way to save money when we have, a, you know, limited funding. So do either of you have any, have any ideas about how to get that message out that operations is both critical and a way to to save money and make make do with with what you've got instead of needing to build expensive new infrastructure. So I'm just going to kind of throw that out there because I think it's a uh, you know a question that a lot of people have, um, whether it's the public or the legislature or whoever um, may be building some support for that. Don, you want to take a first crack and then I go. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, Robbie and Dennis, there's no doubt that uh, the greatest challenge for folks who are in operations is uh, demonstrating the value so that it gets properly funded. It's, uh, it's like I said in my presentation, it's a little unfair. Other folks have uh, physical projects they can point to and ribbon cut. And uh, in operations, the proof is in the data. The proof is in the performance results. So that's why uh, I don't see any other course of action but to uh, really be the leading edge in transportation in terms of uh, performance data uh, around operations. I think when you can show uh, improvements in, in uh, travel time, in reliability, it, that is going to sell. Now it's a, difficult to track it back to each of the operational investments because they're programs. But I think if you start uh, developing data sets that really show the trends, uh, because a lot of these freeway sections aren't receiving any other investments right now other than operational investments, uh, I, I think that's where you can start to win people over. It still won't be easy, but I think uh, even our uh, elected officials, uh, folks who most like to cut the ribbons, at the end of the day, we want to invest public money in the most cost-effective way possible. 
and uh, quite often that is uh, an operational improvement. Great. So, Robbie, uh, I totally agree with, with Don. Um, it's all about showing what we're doing with the, with the monies that we get to spend. Uh, it's not our money, it's someone else's money. Uh, and this, these monies that we get uh, will be tied uh, to some kind of performance measures. Uh, and Don's right. Uh, more and more, uh, as we go forward, we'll be questioned on how did you spend this money and what did you get out of this money. Uh, and operation, pro operation focused project tend to give you better uh, benefit to the cost. That does not mean we should forget about you know um, building bridges or uh, fixing our roadway. Uh, not suggesting that at all. But certainly there should be more focus on operations and see how we can improve what we have first before we start doing something else. Uh, and, and, and Don said something, proof is in the, in the data and proof is in the pudding, absolutely. Uh, Ten years ago, Google had no interest. Um, and, and suddenly you see um, the, the Apples and Googles and everybody else is interested in transportation. Um, but, but they're not interested in, in building our road, but they're, they're interested in operating and managing somehow our highways. So I, 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 I read a story a few days ago. It was very interesting. Um, I think it was in Time magazine that how the younger generation, the millenn millennial at least, they, they want to use Uber or Uber, depending on how you want to call it, um, they trust every Uber totally and Googles and everybody else but they would not give the same trust uh, to government or big companies. So we have lost their trust. We need to regain that trust. And how do we do that? It's only uh, possible if we show them that we are taking their monies and we are, we are doing something that can be um, attached to some kind of performance uh, and gain our trust back. Um, it, it, it's, it's very important uh, that we do that. So. Um, just lost this deal. Um, so, so I think it's it's um, very important that we focus on operations. Uh, every state focuses on operations um, and and, and um, bring it to the forefront, um, and then continue working on the safety aspects and the construction and everything else. Okay. Um, so. Uh, I took a look uh, at who was signed up, and I know most people actually work for D state DOT, so maybe people can um, jump in with some questions about what types of issues they have at their agency. People are being very shy right now with their questions, but um, you know you have two people here who really have a lot of uh, knowledge, and uh, if you don't see your chat box, just click on the little orange arrow in the upper right hand corner, and you know we can take some questions from folks on the phone. Um, but in the meantime, I do want to mention that uh, Dennis has or the center has a uh, a video up on YouTube that talks a little bit more about the center and if you Google his name and National Operations Center of Excellence uh, you can find that YouTube video and we weren't able to include that in the presentation but um, you can probably find that online and, and Robbie thank you for that and, and while we wait for questions uh, and I, I'm hoping someone would at least uh, raise the hand and ask some kind of question, not be shy. Um, the, one of the, 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 um, the toughest uh, performance measure, um, as we all know, under MAP 21, there are about 12 of them. Uh, one of the, the, the most challenging ones is going to be with systems reliability, and that's why it's taking that much longer um, to come to, uh, to um, the change. And, um, and we are having, the center is having a webinar for the non-techies, someone who is really looking at this from an executive level. Um, so there's a webinar on April 7th on um, a national performance data set for systems reliability. Um, it's on April 7th. Uh, log on, register. Um, should be interesting one just to give you an, an idea of what data is, what data is being bought, which was bought by 
Federal Highway from a company called Here. So here is going to be speaking on what data they sold to Federal Highway and then how we can use that data as state um, to, to, to really uh, maximize our efficiencies but also uh, eventually satisfy Federal Highway in what they will be seeking through the rulemaking on, um, on, on the perform performance measure for systems reliability. Great. Uh, Dennis and Robbie, could I, uh, this is Don, could I add something? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you really want to know where all of this is going in operations, uh, this is where I really get exciting. excited because, uh, you know, just last week, uh, looking through the Wall Street Journal, one full-page ad by Cisco Systems, you know, a picture, picture of a car that looks like a, uh, a circuit board, uh, the words are short. It's the Internet of Everything, and it's Cisco's new advertising campaign is the last traffic jam. And we're building the Internet of Everything for connected cities, smarter cars, using a highly secured cloud to keep traffic moving where the roads always flow. And, and so, you know, once this concept starts to capture people's imagination in major advertising campaigns like Cisco and the Wall Street Journal, you know, I think we've got a chance. But, you know, the, the, that also uh, ups the stakes a little bit. And uh, as state DOTs, we're, we're not the most quickly moving uh, group of folks. And uh, we have a really a brand new challenge here to really look at how other industries are integrating uh, communications and technology and find ways with the help of the private sector to make sure we do the same. Uh, I think that's what's been missing in transportation, and I think that could catalyze uh, people's attitudes towards spending more on surface transportation to get better results. It's a great, great point. It's a great point. Um, well, it looks like everybody's uh, operations for their state must be going very well because nobody has any questions. Um, <laughs> I think they're just being shy, and they'll probably contact you offline. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, just in case anything comes up, I just want to uh, let people know that a uh, recording of this webinar is going to be up on our website tomorrow. Uh, we might even get it up today, uh, depending on how quickly we can get that done. And uh, if you have questions about uh, anything, uh, you can contact both Don and um, Dennis, I'm sure. And I apologize, I spelled Dennis's last name incorrectly when I typed in his speaker name, but use the, uh, the uh, there's no N um, uh, in his name uh, if you're looking for that uh, video. Um, but if you are interested in what SSTI has to do or if you want to take a look at this webinar or any of our other webinars, you can find information on the SSTI website, which is ssti.us. You can also subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Twitter for what's coming up and um, when any of uh, the states have great operations ideas, we'll uh, make sure to put that up on our website as well. So I want to thank both of our speakers. We're done a little bit early, and I'm sure everybody can uh, um, appreciate getting a, little, a few extra minutes. So thank you very much uh, to Don and Dennis, and uh, we will be having a webinar for SSTI in April on inner city buses and uh, what the state DOT's role is and how important they are to the operation of the entire transportation system. So thank you, Don and Dennis, and thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Robbie.